Hey, this is Mr. Boynton coming at you with another video. Uh, today we're going to make a three-point perspective drawing. And if you just follow along, we can do it step by step. These are the materials you're going to need. You're going to need a pencil, uh, the ruler uh, that I gave you in your bag, your tape from your science bag, grab that, they won't know, and your original sketchbook, because you need the paper out of it, and the white paper uh, that I gave you also, the big white paper. All right, so what we want to start by doing is taking three papers out of the back of the sketchbook without destroying it. One, two, three. What we're going to do is we're going to put wings on your big paper so that you can move the vanishing points out. All right, so we're going to lay these on. And we want to be able to take these off. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the tape onto your pants to get some fetsies on it so that it won't stick too much. I stick it on my pants and see how it's got some fetsies on there. Okay. And I tape these on. I tape one at the side. One at the other side. These are on the back. Got the fetsies. Okay. And then I need one at the bottom. And now you could put it at the top and make a worm's eye view, but we're going to go ahead and put this at the bottom and make a bird's eye view or what they call a god's eye view. So three-point perspective is pretty exciting. It makes a really dynamic picture. If you've ever read a Spider-Man comic, then you've seen a three-point building, and that works really good. Okay, at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our horizontal lines. But before we start, let's go over the three rules of a three-point perspective drawing. Our first rule is there is only one horizontal line in the picture, and that is the horizon line. All right. Our next rule is there is only one vertical line in the picture, and that is the main vertical going up the middle. Our third rule is that all diagonals must go to one of the three vanishing points. And I'll draw all those out in just a second. So what we want to do first is we're going to put on our only horizontal. And what I do is I put the ruler at the end like this to make it really straight. I lay it on. I'm making my lines really dark. Uh, and then I lay this ruler on here and line it up. I'm making the lines dark so that you can see them on the video. I suggest making your lines very, very light so that you can erase them. And I continue the line over on this side. All right, perfect. Now we're going to put on the only vertical line up the middle to make the cross. I line it up at the top of the paper so it can be right on. And I drag the line down. And I line it up again. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, I'm going to put the vanishing points a little closer in so you can see them on screen. But I suggest moving them out as far as you can so that the picture will, won't be uh, distorted. You won't get a fisheye view. Okay, so this is an example here on our worksheet. We'll start off with our cross. We're going to add some diagonal lines that follow the rules and move on. Uh, the bottom picture looks distorted like a fisheye lens in photography because these vanishing points are so close. So to avoid that, you can move them out. So here we go. We're going to label our VPs. We've got VP1. And we'll label that VP1, vanishing point 1. Over here, we'll have VP2, VP2, vanishing point 2. And down at the bottom, we will have... VP3, vanishing point three. I'm going to tape my paper down here so that I don't have it moving around on me. Again, I'm going to stick it on my pants so it gets a little bit of lint on it. All right. Okay, so we're going to make a box. Our first box we're, we're going to make is going to be below the horizon line. And going to set that up. So we're going to make the box by making a chevron shape. So this corner here will be the tippy corner of the roof 
And this is the building line, and then I'm just gonna go light over here to make sure you know that the line goes over to VP1. This side here is gonna go to VP2. I'm gonna go dark and do it a little lighter over here, because that would just get erased on the side. Now I'm gonna create the bottom of the building, and I'm just gonna go like that. I'm not gonna draw the rest of the line, but you know it's right here. Here's the other line. Every time I make a diagonal, I need to shoot one of the VPs, one of the targets. Okay, all right. Now I'm gonna make the side of the building. If I do vertical lines, this will be a two point perspective, but I want it to be a three point. So I line it up on the third point and the side of the building and I drop it down to the third point here. Okay, on the other side. Okay, I drop it down to the third point here. All right, and then I have what looks like a book, an open book that someone's reading. And now I'm gonna add a diamond shape on the top to create a box shape. I'm gonna go here. That goes over to VP2. I'm always shooting the target. And my other side here goes to VP1. Okay, so if you've been observing, you'll notice that build, the right sides of buildings lines usually go over to VP2. The left side usually go to VP1. So we have our first building. Another thing you want to notice is that buildings below the horizon line, I'm going to erase that so it looks like a building, uh, they, you can see the top. If an object is below the horizon line, you can see the top. If it's above the horizon line, you cannot see the top. So we're gonna add another building. We're gonna do the side of the building. We're gonna start with the side on the VP. Uh, it's covered up, overlapping behind this building. Okay, and then we're gonna make the top arrow, but we're always shooting the target. When I tell kids that these back buildings look like arrows, they just make arrows, but the sides of the arrow always shoot the vanishing point. And then we wanna drop them down again. We don't wanna do them vertical. We wanna do a diagonal that hits VP3. All right, I'm gonna erase some of these so the illusion can become more clear for you. So nice. All right, okay, we're gonna go ahead and make some more buildings. So I would never make a building on the horizon line because it'll be very flat looking and hard to do. So I'm gonna go just a little bit above that. I really advise staying away from the horizon line if you can. <laughs> And let's make it go over here so we can make some more complex stuff. We'll have it go over kind of far. And let's drop it down. Oh, okay. So you might have noticed that you can see it, so I gotta cut it off right here. And this line goes off to VP2. The other side of the building, we're gonna throw it back behind this building, nice and overlapping. All right, so if you bunch up your buildings, you'll have less lines to make, and it's kind of a good way to have less work and still get a cool effect. Okay, we're gonna put another one over here. We lay down the sideline, always shooting the target. We're gonna make the arrow. This side goes to VP2. This side goes to VP1. Now remember, just follow these lines because you can't make any more verticals because that would break your rule, your rule of only having one vertical. And you can't make more horizontal lines because the only horizontal you have is the horizon line. So if you're making a line, it's gonna be a diagonal and it's gonna shoot a target. So we're gonna drop it down to VP3. All right. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, we need five buildings for our assignment that we're doing in class. So we're gonna throw another nice tall one over here. And let's make the arrow on top. Drop it down. And remember on YouTube, you can uh, click the gear on the video and slow the video down so you can see me do this step by step if I'm going too fast. All right. Okay. Drop it down. Okay, so that gives you the five buildings. But if you want to add more, you might want to do windows. So again, windows, you're going to add lines on the side that go to the targets. All of your line work must go to a target. And I'm going to add vertical windows. OK, 
head. Let's do one more. Okay, and I could run another line across if I wanted to do square windows. And I think we'll call that good for our demonstration. There we go. I'm going to make an alley building here. So this is an additional building, so I can show you how to make an alley. I'm going to do the side about right here. And I'm going to carry it back so that there can be an alley where trucks can go. Here. I'm going to stop right about there so it doesn't mess up my illusion. Sometimes when you tangle the buildings up, you can create visual problems. Over there. It's down. So I've created the front of this building. There. And now I'm going to make the diamond on the top. Okay. Right there. Okay. If we want to make a door, we can put the tops of the doors on here. So that is a guide. We always use our guidelines to go to the right vanishing point. There's our doors. Let's make it more detailed. Okay, let's do a sidewalk. So let's see, we'll have this like this. Have a street over there. And Okay, add in the rest of our street. Okay, let's say there's a sidewalk on this side. Awesome. And you know what, let's add a little weird road right here. Okay, all right, so a little car could come, it could go back in here, it could go down this road. You can make it so roads go all over the place and have all kinds of fun. Let's make a garage, let's make a 3D garage on this one. Sides. Okay, so we made a garage door, boring. Let's make it go inside the building. Simply adding this line here, look at that. We can go inside that building, really cool. Just always, when you make a diagonal, make sure it goes to one of the vantage points and you will have a correct drawing. Now I'm gonna show you one more little trick where I can make the sidewalk sections get smaller as they get further away. So what you wanna do, if you just create two sidewalk sections and you're like, how do I make these get smaller at an even pace? You can even do this for the columns on the side of the building. Just go through the, middle of the next line in a Z formation. Okay. And these little pieces will get smaller as they get further away. Eventually they'll turn, they'll get so close you can't even see them anymore. It's kind of a neat way to do it. Sweet. I did this one wrong. Let's fix that up. There we go. I always go, you can go back and erase. So when I erase these, the sidewalk will appear to get smaller as it gets further away. So remember, always line up your lines. Like the sidewalk lines are going over here. A lot of kids want to put them on here just like this or, or horizontal. You got to line them up with your target. I hope that helps you today. Again, uh, Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.